the biggest college football game so far of this 2020 season. So, Mark, we'll, we'll just start right there. I mean, you have a great offense yep. in Alabama. You have a great yep. defense in Georgia. Yep. Strength versus strength, as you highlighted in your article. What yep. wins? What wins in the end, offense or defense? Well, look, if, if Georgia played better offenses the first three games, I would be a little more impressed with their ability to turn a game. Now, they, they really showed themselves in the second half against Tennessee last week. They allowed 71 yards in the second half. Tennessee couldn't get out of their own way, which, by, by the way, that was their, their chance, Tennessee. If they wanted to be somebody in the SEC East, right, because it's been Florida and Georgia forever, um, they, they had their chance to step up, and they didn't. So, you know, like, like Kentucky had a couple years ago, Tennessee missed their spot. And, uh, you know, who knows if they can get it back. Uh, certainly, I don't think they're capable of winning the division anymore, but maybe, you know, they'll make the Tangerine Bowl or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but, Tennessee, I'm with you. Tennessee is frauds. They are, yeah, like, I mean, they are like Texas. They're like Miami. Like, there's always a lot of hype. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt's done a good job recruiting. But, like, until they win mm-hmm. some big games, until they show up, even just show up in a, in a yeah. big game, let's just pump the brakes on thinking Tennessee is legit or a team or a contender. I'm with you. Well, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, you, look, you had like, LSU last year when they went into Alabama. You know, you and I talked about it before, you know, uh, before, before the game. And I, I, I didn't think they were capable of going in there and stopping Alabama from scoring. And then what, what happens? The first drive, Tour makes a mistake, fumbles the ball. LSU picks it up. You know, they, they pick up on their opportunity, and then they ran away with the game. And, you know, Alabama came back, made it close. But LSU really put their foot down at that point and said, we are serious. We beat the defending SEC West champion at that point and lost to Clemson in the national championship. And they said, we're, we're, we're for real. And it was Tennessee's time to do that. They didn't. Uh, you know, just like if anybody else who wants to step up in the SEC East, you know, since when, when was the last time somebody else won the division besides Florida and oh well, yeah, yeah, Missouri a couple of years, but uh, you know, then they get blown out in the SEC championship game. But really, it's been Florida and and uh, and Georgia in that in that division, you know, ever since yeah, Phil Fulmo left. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm with you here. It's even even Georgia too going into this year. I'll be honest, I've kind of, and I, I still am on, and I think you're with me too, on the Florida bandwagon. I think that that's, yeah. when it comes to Georgia, you're right. Like the biggest frustration for me with Georgia and why I kind of always, not struggle to buy in, because I think they'll always be, you know, one of those top teams, always be in the rankings, always be in the mix. Like you said, they've dominated the SEC East the past few years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They will not get over the hump until they finally come into the 21st century with offense. Now they're supposed to do it with yeah. Jamie Newman, which I thought, you know, to me at least was the biggest, that was the most impactful Opt out of college football, not because he's the best player that opted out. Right? There's a lot of other players that opted out that aren't coming back, There's but because of what he was supposed to do, exactly right. Mm-hmm. What he was supposed to do with this offense, where he was supposed to take them to actually be a mobile quarterback, to actually run the spread offense, which was what everyone is doing, really except Georgia. They're not doing yeah. it, as we've seen. Stetson Bennett, he's played well so far, but he yeah, again he more has. of a pro style offense. That this is more just again. Not a high-flying tempo offense that, that we see even with Ole Miss last week. What they can do against Alabama, oh my God. right? No. Are you are you buying into Georgia's offense at all? Uh, no, I I I I'm not because again they played the, the what the ninth, tenth, and eleventh ranked defense in the SEC. You know, with Arkansas, um, Auburn, and uh, and who they played the, the they played Tennessee, like, you know, Tennessee, yeah. So look, uh, Georgia. First of all, they have they have a couple things they got to get over. They got to get over the fact that they've collapsed in three of the last four games against Alabama, blowing double digit second half leads. That's a big big thing, and they had proven quarterbacks play those games. You know, Jake Fromm and uh, and Andy Murray. Okay, they were probably the best that Georgia had since Matthew Stafford, who Stafford lost to Alabama also, but he beat Alabama as well the year before. So. They have to get over that. That's, that might be a mental gap. I don't know if they can. Every time they got to put their foot down, they don't do it. All right? You know, Alabama in the SEC championship game two years ago outscored them, what, they were down 28-14. They scored the final 21 points of that yep. game with Jalen Hurts coming in. And then, you know, the SEC uh, the national championship game, they were up, like, 27. And, uh, and then, you know, two leads them back. And then, of course, in overtime, you think that they got them. You, th- you think that the game is over, and then, boom, the game is over the other way. In one play, so and th- th- that's the thing about Alabama. Um, I I, I kind of made reference to it because everybody's saying like Alabama's defense is weak and look, Ole Miss is good. I mean they lead the SEC in offense, 
They are second in the nation in offense. They can put up yards on anybody. The problem is they can't stop anybody. Yeah. As good okay? as they can put up offense is how bad their other defense is. Right. So, and, and Lane Kiffin, you know, give the guy credit. He's the whole reason why Alabama has this new and exciting offense. You know, and Sarkeesian is kind of just molded into perfection because he had the horses to run with it. But, you know, Alabama always had, you know, the, the, the athletes in Cooper and Jones and, you know, um, you know, the wide receivers, but they didn't have the quarterback, okay? Uh, Tua was the first, you know, and, and they didn't trust Jalen Hurts as much as they trusted Tua. You see Jalen Hurts throwing 4,000 yards with Oklahoma. He could have done that with Alabama, but he didn't. Uh, and then Tua comes in, and then the whole offense is different. Mac Jones has played incredibly good. I liked him from the beginning. I thought he played really he, – I thought he showed a lot of guts in that Auburn game when he threw those two pick sixes. And really, the one near the goal line should have totally deflated him. And he came right back. And he, he played very well that game. If it weren't for a couple of brain farts uh, by Saban, which normally never happens, um, they, 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 they should have won that game. And also the extra second on the clock that always seems to happen down in Auburn. Uh, but, weird um, things. That's another thing. I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. Everything, those Auburn home games, never anything goes right. Like, there's no ordinary game at Jordan Hare Stadium. There's always yeah. something that happened that's bizarre, that's weird, clock, Isn't it? Isn't it a true? bizarre ending, and now we saw it with Bo Nix spiking the ball backwards, but they didn't, they, yeah, right? they didn't recover it. It's, there's never a game that goes smoothly and mm -hmm. simply that happens in Auburn. Right, and you got, you know, Auburn's been good. I mean, you know, Auburn's been just, you know, they're not in Alabama's class, nobody is, but they are, they, they have, them and LSU are the only teams that are or consistently can challenge Alabama in the last, you know, since Saban's been there. Okay. And that, 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 that's the other thing here. People don't realize how much Alabama's really dominated. Okay. Now this matchup, since Saban's come to the SEC, Georgia, Alabama have the two highest winning percentages. Uh, Georgia's uh, uh, right, not that close to Alabama because Alabama is light years ahead of everybody. Uh, I think Alabama's won like 89% of their SEC games. They've won – Alabama's won 27 straight against the SEC East. Crazy. The last, game, the last time they lost was to Steven Garcia and South Carolina in 2010. Crazy. Okay, wow. it was with Marcus Lattimore. I yeah, I think Alshon okay. Jeffrey was their wide receiver. Yeah, that was, yep. that was a fun I mean, team. It, yep, and actually South Carolina won the East that year with three losses. Oh. If you can imagine a team winning a division with three losses. Um, and, and, and even further, that was the Cam Newton year. Alabama, uh, South Carolina was up 28-7 to against Kentucky, and they lost. Hmm. They lost 31-28. Can't make it up. Yeah, you can't make it up. They win the East, okay, and they are blowing out in the SEC championship game. Uh, and Alabama, 35-3 and against the SEC East. The only teams they lost to, they lost to Georgia in 2007 at home. That's their only home loss. That was Saban's first home game. And they lost to Florida in the 2008 SEC championship right. game. The only times they've lost to an SEC East team, 35 and three. Crazy. So, you know, pe people who talk about the SEC, we all know it's the best conference in college football, but there's a distinct difference between the West and the East that I highlighted when I was doing my uh, my preseason work. Uh, the West has won what five or six national championships since Saban came there. And the East has, you know, and even if you go to the SEC championship games, it's been seven to one the last eight years since they went to the, you know, since Texas A&M and Missouri joined right. the SEC. So the West is really dominating over the East. The only time that the that the East won a uh, SEC championship game was when Auburn lost a, a couple of years ago to Georgia. So, right. Um, you know, it, it's and, – and, and you basically know that anytime there's a big game between the two divisions, usually the West comes out on top. Um, so this is, this is just as much for the East. If you're Georgia, uh, you got to – you know, now is the time. Everybody – you know, everything that I'm hearing from the so-called experts is that Georgia's defense is for real. Mm -hmm. um, Alabama can't stop anybody, and that the, you know, and then that's the reason why Georgia's going to win. But here's another thing you got to think of. Alabama has 45 plays where they've scored a, 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 a touchdown of 30 yards or more since 2018. 45 plays. 
of scrimmage. Crazy. They just scored a touchdown, 30 yards or more. So their offense is scoring a lot quicker. You know, before they used to take these long drives and eat up 10 minutes and, you know, run the ball down your throat. Right. They don't do that anymore. Now they can score from anywhere at any time. That puts the defense on the field a lot more. So if you look at the last three years, they've had more defensive plays than they've had offensive plays, where from 2009 to 2017, it was exactly the opposite. So that's a, that's a small part of the reason why uh, Alabama's defense is maybe a little bit vulnerable. Not not the big part. Obviously, Alabama's defense isn't as dominant as it was, you know, in 2010, 2011, right. 2012. Okay, everybody knows that. Um, Dylan Moses coming back was a huge help. Mm-hmm. It still kind of hasn't clicked, though, because they're still getting exposed for too many things. You know, if I'm their defense, I'm really afraid that Saban's not going to be on the sideline because you know he's going to be nitpicking every little thing they do wrong, and he's going to have all the access, all the camera angles, everything that he can possibly have at his, at his dispense to really give these guys an earful if they don't step up and start playing like they're capable of playing. And that, that's where the biggest difference is to me. What's more likely to happen? Is Georgia likely to explode and score 50 points a game, which is what Alabama is averaging now? Or are they, uh, or is Alabama's defense more capable of stopping a good but not great Georgia offense? Yeah, and another another uh, interesting wrinkle to this, Mark, is obviously we have the news of Nick Saban having COVID. Thankfully, mm-hmm. so far, it seems he's okay. He's asymptomatic. It seems yep. to be, you know, hopefully he'll recover no problem. Let him get the treatment trumped up. Yeah. <laughs> so, you should. He runs in the same circles, right? It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I, I think, he's the most I important think, person in the state, Ryan. Yes, <laughs> no, I think Alabama will do everything possible to make sure that, that he is okay. It's it's funny because now I almost heard that news. And it's almost like I'm like, all right, you know what? Like coming off of maybe their I know coming off their worst defensive performance under Nick Saban since he's been there at Alabama. Mm-hmm. I think this is almost a thing where now it's like they are going to come out fired up, maybe even more inspired than ever because he's mm-hmm. not there. I, I think that this is a game like you said where I'm kind of believing in in um, in Alabama's defense to slow Georgia down. I don't think Georgia has exactly the right style of offense to give Alabama fits. We see Alabama has fits with the mobile quarterbacks with up-tempo mm-hmm. offenses. Georgia's yep. not either of those. So I think nope. that this is a game where they really do bounce back and kind of show that, you know what, for all the panic, all the concern about the Alabama defense, sure, again, it was exposed on Saturday. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But I think that's more of a one-off and just based on the opponent than anything else. Mm-hmm. And also Kirby Smart and um... – and then Kiffin, both ex, you know, ex had, you know, right. ex coaches right. with Saban, but they are different strengths. Okay, so you know, I, I like Kirby. I I love Kirby Smart. I think he's a great coach. Um, and you know, Lane Kiffin, I never really liked as a coach because I thought he was a guy you couldn't trust. But you know, I think he's really going to start to build something down there at Ole Miss. Finally, you might have another team besides Auburn, LSU, and and Alabama to compete in the West. Um, and if, you know, if they can do that, that's going to be huge. Um, you know, and, and I remember you and I were talking about Mississippi State in the first game against LSU. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was saying that could be a team because you know, Alabama usually has problems with Mississippi State because they've got a good defense. But I'm thinking maybe with uh, Costello, they're going to have a hard time stopping that. If LSU couldn't, they might not be able to. And then you know, they go out and they lose to Arkansas and they score two points against Kentucky, and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't know anymore. I, I know. That's, that's, like, that's so Mike Leach, though, is just like yeah, that, that, really, that really. is his tenure. Washington State knows it. Texas Tech knows it. He will have an incredible week one week, and then all of a sudden that offense will disappear. They won't, they won't have any success, and it's just like, yeah, I'm interested to see how they, um, mm-hmm. how they go back. Because I'm with you. I thought, like, I thought that first game at LSU is going to be legit more because we don't see that style of offense in the SEC. Like, you know, like right. we, we still like the spread is coming for sure. But this is the absolute extreme. This is throw the ball 80 times. We're going to run the ball maybe five times yep. at best. But this is throw, yep. throw, 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 throw. Yep. Teams aren't used to that. Teams are yep. not in the SEC built to stop that. Um, and I thought that was going to give more teams no. fits than – I mean, so far it's looking like a one-shot wonder. I think they'll, they'll still be around. They'll still be one of those pesky teams that we're getting upset yeah, at, too. Yeah, I think so. They'll figure it out, yeah. To be they, a, they could. They right. could challenge against Alabama. But, I, I think they – yeah. Know, 